Welcome back to Behind the Screen, my general purpose GM tips and content creation. Uh, as ever, if you have any burning questions or just general questions about GM tips, please feel free to ask. I will answer them as best I can. And if I can't, I will 100% get sidetracked and try to find the answer out, thereby disrupting the entire stream. It'll be your fault. So you probably should just ask and make everyone else feel better about themselves. Um, that's my little joke. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm dealing with a little bit of uh, sleep deprivation right now, thanks to... That was the wrong window. That's where my computer stems from. Uh, thanks to illness a couple of days ago. But kind of quick announcements and recap uh, recaps. Uh, last Saturday, I was in... Last Saturday, yes. Uh, I was involved in a Deviant the Renegades one-shot run by... Uh, Eric Swatsky, the developer, with uh, our very own Plastic Age plays, Creighton One, and the Primogen, uh, all of whom do stuff on this channel. Uh, I can't. Creighton One was the, I believe, Athens, Ohio game. The Primogen is involved in Blood City and one of the Changeling games. And Plastic Age plays is Travis, like the program coordinator, and does like the Scarland stuff and Extreme Drow S and whatnot, I believe. So, um, that was that. That's up on the... That's available as a VOD right now. Um, there is a week's exclusivity period for subscribers on Twitch. So if you have an Amazon Prime account and you haven't yet linked your Twitch account to that, please do consider doing that and using your free... Admittedly, you have to renew it every month, but free Twitch subscription, your Twitch Prime subscription on this channel. It helps it grow. Um... If you want to get in on that week's exclus exclusivity period, reminder that this this show is also tied into that. So um, if you don't want to watch any past episodes, you have to wait a week for them. Uh, but then they go up on my YouTube channel, Comrade Bubbles. You can probably guess why that's under my name, under my face in the webcam frame. Uh, but that, that's, that will probably hit YouTube in about a week's time, I would I would guess. I don't see why not. Uh, other thing to note is that there is currently a Kickstarter going on for Mummy the Curse Second Edition, uh, which there is actually a link for in this week's Monday meeting notes. Do a quick general, uh, you know, read of the copy for that. Imagine being both dead and deathless at the same time. Imagine being cradled in the arms of death for years, sometimes decades on end, but all the while knowing you will eventually not only arise again, but possibly awaken to an unfamiliar world. Now imagine that your purpose, your entire existence, is bound within this cycle, that you are chained to it for eternity. You sleep, you wake, you serve your judge's will in the lands of the living, and you return to the death sleep once more. The ancient culture that empowered you is gone, lost to the sands of time, yet you endure. So that's the... General kind of copy for Mummy the Curse. Uh, apparently Silicon Path is not dropping that link, so I will do that manually. Or it might, but here's the link for the Kickstarter. Check it out if you want to. It's really cool. As of time of recording, it is at uh, just over 200% funded. So that's pretty neat, and it's got nine days left. So by the time this stream rolls around again, there will not be any promotional stuff for Mummy the Curse. So if you don't like that kind of thing, I guess there's that. And as uh, ever, if you are interested in keeping up on what's going on with Onyx Path, including updates on latest Kickstarters and actually updates on uh, project timelines and whatnot, the Monday meeting notes available at that link uh, are the best way to, to follow that news. Um, as an aside, if you just go to the next path, if you just type in Monday, and if you're back now for the manuscript preview from Mummy, that is great, Navop. I love that Onyx Path do that so much. Um, I'm hearing good things. Also, hello, welcome. Uh, if you do ever want to read the Monday meeting notes, just type in Onyx Path Monday meeting notes, and it'll bring you up a, like a category of them on the Onyx Path website. And that's generally a good place to stay involved, involved, aware of Onyx Path goodness. So. I've been through my spiel about what this show is. I've been through the spiel about updates. Uh, I will probably mention those updates again at the end of the stream in about two hours' time. I did start a bit late, but luckily, it being 9 a.m. EST or uh, 2 o'clock, um, 2 p.m. Uh, GMT. I think I'm in GMT right now. Yeah, Grand Me Time. 
uh, is there's no one on after me, so I can afford to overrun slightly. So I'll try to do two hours. I started about five past two, so I'll try to go back to about five past four. And so far, I've not been told I can't do that. Again, there's no one after me usually, so there's that. Uh, especially nice was in this Monday meeting notes, the show got a shout out. So that was that was cool. Uh, tying in with some other Scion stuff happening later in the week. Okay. Standard disclaimers that anyone who's been catching these shows for a while or watching them on YouTube will be sick of by now, but I am disabled. Uh, I do suffer, suffer from muscle spasms and twitches, uh, which can lead to me stuttering or slurring my words. Um, I apologize about that. I don't apologize for being disabled, but it can make some people unsettled and it can also make me difficult to understand on top of the fact that quite clearly I speak quite quickly, which I'm aware for... Um, some people presents a problem, so I, I do try to keep reining that in slightly. Uh, but I, if I lose, con if I not lose concentration, but if I take stop thinking about that kind of thing, I will speed up again. So I, I apologize if you ever want me to clarify anything or to repeat anything. Please do let me know via the chat. Uh, I'm monitoring it both on a tablet I've got to main to monitor my the stream quality on my end to make sure I'm going well. Um, I'm just going to pause the stream on my t computer. Uh, chat window and obviously you can see the chat on the stream itself i just thought that was a cool way to get everyone involved so that everyone could see where the ideas come from this is a community driven show um where if you have any ideas for stuff please do feel free to shout out about them i will ask um when i'm struggling for ideas but e equally i'm happy to just answer questions and bounce ideas around to develop them that's how some of this content has already been created and it is way better than i could have done myself so uh, I also struggle with multiple trains of thought, so I'll try to finish one train before answering questions, unless it's like a really easy to answer question. And I'll generally try to try to answer try to answer a question to the best of my ability uh, before moving on to something else. Uh, you can't see it, but I talk with my hands a fair amount. Let's get my blanket out of. The... It's quite cold in this room sometimes, so I have a blanket in here. Um, so if I hit the microphone, it'll a sound terrible and b hurt. So I apologize. And because this obviously isn't a traditional show wherein there are there is a story guide and players, um, but still trying to build the Onyx Path community of streamers together, I will be working in references to other Onyx Path shows. So as ever, um, we might actually get to it this week, but it's probably going to be next time I stream, which uh, will be a fortnight from today on the 10th of December. Yes, on the 10th of December. Uh, will be a custom stunt referencing the Yeet into Space threat from Occultus and Anonymous, which is one of the major The Awakening games on this channel. So that's all of that. Um, so those disclaimers. Uh, moving on to the recap of what we've done so far. So, so far, so uh, as you can see on the screen right now, um, well, so this is what I've done in about four weeks, I, 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 I want to say. So the purpose is to show, slightly exaggerated, the process of, of how, how I personally go about creating content for games. Um, and this could change for you, obviously, it might. Everyone approaches things differently. I prefer a more hands-off improvisational approach with flexible story seeds. So writing stuff like this isn't, isn't really my... Uh, Forte is the wrong word. It's not what I would typically do. Let's put it that way. Um, but it serves as a practical example to any tips I'm talking about at the time. Uh, and because that was the whole purpose of the show, it was like, here, loads of people give you tips, but never how to implement them. So I'm going to implement them and show you how and discuss them and, and give you kind of ways you can tweak them. Uh, so we're creating a chronicle together. Uh, it is an introductory chronicle, not a quick start because there will be no rules in it. An introductory chronicle for Scion, second edition, uh, specifically origin level Scion. And it will go up on the story path Nexus where you can pay what you want for it with any additional, uh, any money raised, obviously helping me to continue the show and to invest in equipment like streaming equipment and stuff to help raise the quality of the show. Um, so, so far... Thank you, Inclusive Gaming, for that resub. We appreciate it. So, so far, uh, I have discussed the characters involved. I have discussed 
uh, how to make one, how to make a character in Scion. I did that on stream. It took, I think, two and a half hours. Um, just talking about decision making processes, getting chats input, and it started out very different. It ended very differently from how I kind of envisaged envisaged and eh, envisaged the character. So that was great. That was a good example of collaborative um, storytelling and and world building and stuff. Uh, I've explained the game. The first episode of this was actually just two hours of me waxing lyrical about general GM tips. So you know, check that out if you just want general tips. But after writing the char- after making the character, I then did an uh, adventure outline, which is what this is, which is what I'm using to direct what I write because it's useful to have that framework of knowing the start and the end points. But my personal philosophy when writing anything is is, is avo- avoid railroading at all costs. Um, railroading is a term I don't like. I prefer calling it guiding. Um, but too much guidance in play. Um, so these are, yes, scenes, but they could technically fit in any order, uh, apart from the epilogue. Uh, well, the finale and the epilogue, obviously, they have to happen at the end in that order, otherwise they don't make sense. Although the epilogue could be an additional scene within the actual body of the adventure, but that's up to story guide preferences. These are just scenes that you could fit in technically any order to make, hopefully, a cohesive story. Um, and it's taking me far longer than I intended because I overlooked one important fact. If you are writing one scene for each character to introduce that character, no matter how long that's going to take at the table, which I think my guidance is about 10 minutes, that's still six scenes because I'm giving six characters so that with a standard five player group, you've got everyone has a choice. Um, that's still six scenes with the time and involvement implicit in that. So it's taking a while. I don't regret that. It means that you can watch me go through everything and it means I'm building up a stable of uh, SGC story guide character uh, stat blocks uh, that you can just plug into your own games or whatnot if you want to. Um, but it's taking a bit longer than I thought. So today, hopefully, we'll finish that up. I've got three stat blocks to make for Martina, one of the uh, one of the pregens, and uh, the last scene to outline, and four stat blocks for that scene. So seven stat blocks in one scene. I believe I can do this in two hours, near near an hour and twenty at this point. Um, hour and twenty, hour and th- hour and forty. Uh, I believe I can do it, but if I can't, I don't really care because I'm hanging out with cool people, helping hopefully introduce more people to the hobby or to introduce people to Scion, which is a great game. And we should all hopefully be learning from each other or gaining different ways of looking at things or just different ideas about things. Like, for example, a couple of streams ago, when I was talking about how you can shift the focus on how you can tailor story guide characters to other scenes if you don't want them to be as prominent, you just make them worse. Uh, someone hadn't thought of that and thought it was really cool. So hopefully we'll finish the introductory scenes. So introductory scenes, I'd say about 10 minutes long. Um, designed to introduce the character. So far we've done Ash. Uh, it was the character we, that I made on stream with all of you f- fair folk. Who uh, by... Isabel King, Liam McMurn, and Martina Vasquez, or Vasquez, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Or, because if you pronounce it one way, everyone just thinks of a character from Aliens, which is no, you know, no bad thing, but we're not playing the Aliens role-playing game. Uh, So Martina is what, or Martina, is where we ended it uh, last stream. If I change tab, it works due to the powers of tabbed browsing and the internet. Uh, You can see that I've done one template that was how i finished last stream uh so that's that's what we're up to that's the general recap of 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 everything is there anything else i need to oh yes so uh as this is intended as an introductory um adventure chronicle call it what you will i'll probably alternate between the two because it's a really short chronicle um broadly speaking my approach to introductory games, because I do run a lot of introductory games uh, for a local board game cafe, is you should have a low-stakes scene, a scene where players are free to explore, and an action scene to cap it all off, to bring them all together, allow them to use what they've learned, and to um, 
end with a bang, really. Have that cool memory of, yes, we succeeded. Uh, I will address the elephant in the room. I will be looking this way quite a bit because that's where my chat is. I work on my main monitor, which is here. And I have a secondary monitor here. Um, so these intro scenes are completely low stakes. There might be a bit of combat, but generally speaking, these are going to be the low stakes scene of the Chronicle. After I've written all six, I will write uh, one scene, or we will create one scene, whatever, um, to function as a introduction for parties who aren't comfortable having six spotlight scenes, essentially, or w one spotlight scene per character, I should say. Um, which I might reuse some of these story guide character templates from for, uh, for just to speed up that process. Uh, so that's that's what that's all about, and then it'll go into a couple a little couple of scenes of freedom to explore, where they kind of learn about what's going on, and then an action scene with the whole climax thing. Uh, and any design notes I make, so you'll notice. Uh, I don't think there are any uh, here. For example, uh, this is the one what I was on about when you make a character worse. Anything in double asterisks because I'm using Google Docs for this because it's just really easy to capture. Um, when I transfer it to another program. Anything in double asterisks will be... This is a terrible example, because much like in the main rulebook, I'm going to be using these as sidebars next to the relevant entry. Uh, here. These double asterisks, these ones specifically, and any other in the main document, they will be included as design notes material in an appendix to highlight my thought processes and to provide a bit of context for why I did what I did, which I guess is a redundant statement considering I just said it's about highlighting thought processes. Never mind. Uh, it's just something I thought might be interesting for people who um, oops, sorry, have little experience writing material or creating material for their own games. Or just to provide people kind of a, this is how I did it, this is how you could do it kind of situation. I think that's the recap. I just checked my notes, but I think that's it. So we might be able to get straight in. Yes, we can get straight in. So today, as I said, I'd like to finish Martinez scene and uh, Michael Kettering, the final pre-gen scene. Uh, and then if I have time, which I highly doubt will help, but if I do, um, I would like to start with, at least start making the connecting threads. Uh, the connecting threads are um, how each scene will end, essentially. It's going to be something that will draw all the player characters together. Uh, I've mentioned before that a really cool thing about Scion is that Fate, with a capital F, is an actual mechanical force within the game. So if you do want to be lazy, which, let's face it, sometimes when you're halfway through a campaign and you've kind of burned out on ideas because you've front-loaded everything with cool, awesome scenes... But you can't. You just can't think how to get players together. Or my typical problem is, how do I get the players together without them meeting in a tavern or a coffee shop, I guess in Sion's case, a uh, pub maybe. Um, having that crutch of fate brings you together is really cool. It is really useful, as long as you don't overuse it, because then it gets tropey and annoying. Um, but fate is a mechanic in the game. Please do feel free to use it. Also, if you have any questions about the game in general, because Sion isn't one of the bigger net games right now anyway, uh, feel free to ask. I will answer, as again, to the best of my ability. Um, so the connecting threads are kind of fate's way of bringing the the, uh, the band together. The band being the collective term for a group of scions. Scions being the children of gods, whether born, chosen, or born, chosen, incarnated, or created. Um, and there we go. That's the recap. Let's get on with it. I'm on the wrong tab. Professional streamer, don't you know. Uh, oh yes, other important disclaimer, I'm not an official representative of Onyx Path, they are just kind enough to give me the use of their channel for two hours every two weeks. They probably could be two hours every week, but I don't, I don't want to burn out personally, and having the week off allows me to kind of take a step back from this project, and um, think about it, get develop my ideas slightly before coming back to it fresh, um, which is great, because like, as I said, I'm dealing with sleep deprivation, so I don't... The worst case scenario for me would be to put out content I'm not happy with on someone else's channel. So having that two, that week off really, really helps with that. So, 
numbers. Let's plug some numbers into some templates, shall we? Uh, okay, so a MOOC is 542113. Five, four. Uh, I also will be struggling, I will make typos because one, people are watching me, and two, uh, my microphone is one one three uh, directly in my the middle of my field of view where it obscures my keyboard. I don't have the room for a boom arm, so I I, I do the best I can with what I have, and unfortunately it means I don't always see the key I'm t hitting properly. So I'm trying to do it slowly but carefully to cut down on uh, errors. Uh, we'll call these MOOCs for now, but it might be subject to change. Five, four, two. One, one, and three. I will also try to mute my mic when I drink, because it's a sensitive mic, and not, I know that it's not a pleasant sound hearing people drink on stream. So there we go. Okay, are there any questions before we get started? Or are you happy for me to just head straight? I'm gonna head straight on in anyway because there's a chat delay, but I will answer questions as they come up. So, uh, address the other elephant in the room, I guess, or another elephant in the room, because there may be more. Uh, police in this scene are classed as MOOCs because the, excellent, the up, I shall, uh, are classed as MOOCs uh, because the focus will be on the activists. All of the elephants. Oh, Silicon Path is dropping the link for, for Mummy. Excellent. Elephants are great. Um, quick recap of the scene for everyone to catch up, actually. So, um, each scene is going to be different. It has a different focus. Uh, so, Martina Vasquez is... Or Vasquez. I'll just, Martina is a... I hope that's the correct pronunciation. I don't speak Spanish. Is uh, a violinist... Um, you know, I'll just read the character notes so that we're all on the same page. Uh, co concept, award-winning musician, chosen of Apollo. So she's not born. She's talented enough with music that Apollo has chosen her as, as his scion. Uh, not that she knows that. Erased in wealth, she displayed rare talent with the violin and quickly became a local sensation who teaches disadvantaged youth in her spare time. Uh, she does have a muse, the capital M's and the nine muses, uh, isn't aware that literally is a muse. She thinks she's just a cool, a, 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 an inspirational friend. Um, so that's where Martina, that's where she's coming from. Uh, the setting for the scene is an activist event at the Redfield Center for Renewable Sciences. Um, I was thinking about this in previous streams. I've said that this is all set in Fairview, which is my kind of go-to generic American city because I'm aware that a large percentage of role players for Honest Math Games are American. A lot of the audience appears to be American for this show. And it's just an easy cultural touchstone because of TV. Um, however, I was thinking about this. It doesn't make sense to set it there in line with the theme of the Chronicle, which is sudden revelations um, and, and stuff like that. So this is going to be a place where, sure, people know that Scions exist, but large cities are going to be more likely to attract the attention of Titan Spawn and other agents of chaos and change and negative forces in the, in the world with a capital W. So this is more going to be kind of a medium-sized town, I think, or a lot, either, well, small city or large town. I'm leaning towards town, um, but kind of an up-and-coming town. It's got a center for renewable sciences. It's got a... Uh, and Ashworth Renewables, these are two competing uh, companies, by the way. And Ashworth Renewables, um, I mean, this could actually, so it might have a university campus and this could be happening on campus, to be fair. That would make sense with a mental health and awareness center as well. So we'll say that. Um, I'll just include that in my design notes so I don't forget what I've just decided. Uh, the thing is held on.
uh, on campus in an Ashworth science sponsored building. There we go. That gets around that. Uh, so there's an activist event at the Center for Renewable Sciences. What they're um, also in the United States, it says that if you want cutting edge musical performance, I hope they're going to be doing to campuses. Also that. Also that. Um, I don't know if I gave her an age. I don't think I gave any of them ages. I don't think there's any way to record age on the character sheet, actually. Not on the on the one-page version, anyway. There is not. Um, nope. Uh, messed up all my windows now. Uh, that's true for to be to to be fair. That's true here in the UK as well. Um, it's kind of a very stagnant scene uh, outside of universities, is my understanding. Apart from kind of obviously small independent clubs and whatnot. Uh, right. So there's this activist event happening. I no idea what I just hit on my microphone. I hopefully, I didn't change any of the settings. Um, no idea what there. It's an event about. Per se, maybe Redfield Centre is involved in a controversy of some kind and they're protesting that. But essentially, um, Martina and her band, orchestra, what have you. I've called it band members, but it could easily be orchestra people, members, that's the word. Um, are there probably, if it's an activist event, I was kind of envisaged, I think I was envisaging it as um, maybe it's a fundraising party. I think that's what I, what I went with last time. So they're there to raise money for a project at the center uh, on the street, but because it is, you know, renewable energy, there are, um, there is a crowd you can see here. Um, who some of them are not as how to put this delicately, accepting of climate change. Um, I know that it's quite a, although it shouldn't be, it still is a fairly controversial topic. Um, so that's what that's all about. You know what, I'll, I'll put that here actually. Um, I've already got a fundraising event though. Open day. No, open day wouldn't have a crowd in this, in this Skeptics, yes, there are skeptics. Um, let's just have a public speaking event. Public lectures. There we go. That's not high spell public at all. Uh, So Ash has seen the focuses on fundraising. This scene, the focus is on people uh, because I believe, would you believe it or not, but as a musical prodigy, I decided her highest arena would be social. And she is very persuasive. I never actually realized, because I've I, like, I made the sheets weeks ago and I've never actually thought through the, the connotations of all of this, but she starts out with 10 dots, uh, 10 dice in a, in a manipulation persuasion pool. That is impressive. And if she's trying to persuade musicians, that's a free enhancement from a culture specialty. Free enhancement with children from an empathy specialty. She is a social powerhouse for persuading people. Anyway, that is not my problem. Uh, so public lectures have drawn a crowd, so that's what that's about. So they've got a bit of music for between the talks. There's a crowd, there are police providing security. That's where we're at. I really should take better notes when I'm writing rather than going, oh, I'll remember, because sometimes I don't, as you can tell. Okay, so band member, archetype. So the activists are the professionals in this situation. The band members are background characters. The focus definitely should be on Martina. It is her spotlight scene. If the uh, if the players decide to, to to go with the spotlight scenes, so as uh, origin level uh, story guide characters, I lost the word there. Antagonists. There we go. Uh, where are the example antagonists? There we go. 
typically speaking, a, a MOOC level antagonist does not have equality. So equality is, um, I'm going to use more terms that people are not necessarily aware of, um, roughly equivalent to, and I've got to get this the right way around. Hang on one sec, maybe, it t maybe it'll tell me. Uh, uh, oh God, I don't want to get this the wrong way around because people will yell at me. Well, they won't because you're all nice, po nice folks, but Oh, it doesn't say. I believe qualities are relevant to knacks and flares are boons. Hang on, I can answer that question. Yes, you have to spend stuff for... Well, it has a cooldown. But... I believe that's the right way around. So qualities are comparable to heroic... Uh, well, not heroic in this level, but to a player character's knacks, um, constant passive effects and, and flares, which there are no fields for right now, but flares are um, comparable to, to boons, which origin level characters don't have access to, but they're overt manifestations of something. So uh, slightly different, obviously. So a flare could be, um, well, the one I'm looking at right now is called Spray and Pray. You empty the mag into a target, uh, towards a target. That kind of thing. Although there are also supernatural supernatural abilities associated with them. Uh, but as these are mooks, they do not have access to uh, qualities or flares. And as they are specifically intended as background characters, the professional characters like this... Um, uh, activists... I'm not giving them flares. Um, they don't need them, so I'm not going to give them any. They are designed to be picked up and played by other player characters who want to help with the scene and to provide a stat block for background characters if the need should arise for dice to be rolled. Equally, of course, something you can always bear in mind is work out average number of successes in the dice pool uh, and just use that as a static difficulty or a static number, uh, value, what have you. So um, we'll go with this as an example. So as a professional, the activist has seven dice in their primary pool of um, we can change the world or world research claims. And these obviously do tie into various skills on the character sheet, but they have seven dice. Uh, at origin level, um, a success is an eight, nine, or a 10, which is just under a third. So if you just, if you assume that you're going to get um, two successes. We'll round up to be generous. Uh, assume that you're going to get two successes on seven dice. Then any opposed roll has a difficulty of two, for example. Uh, you can tweak that, obviously, by adding complications or uh, giving enhancements if you want to make it easier or harder. But if you don't feel like rolling dice, if you want to speed things up, just go with the static values. Um, I won't include them, but that's something that you can do something I do a lot, actually, um, in uh, dice pool-based games specifically. I did it, did it a lot in Vampire the Masquerade. I just divided the dice pools by two because now when it's six or higher is a success. But anyway, that's, that's how you can use that GM tip in play, I guess. Uh, obviously, when you get down to small dice pools, I guess you'd round up to two just so that it's not, not basically an automatic success if you're doing an opposed roll. Or equally, if you just... If it's not opposed, but you want the story guide character to be doing something, um, I guess you just make a snap decision on the difficulty of the action. And if that third value is higher is greater than that value then it succeeds if not it fails and you don't have to roll dice um so that's kind of what that all works out i really am surprised it's taken me i think this is episode seven uh seven you know 12 hours to realize that i haven't discussed this kind of thing and i probably should so there we go Band members, right, MOOC. So primary pool for a band member. Oh, I was going to pull up the character sheet, so I had 
Uh, let's just kind of drop that there. Um, oh, one quick thing to note, because I'm not streaming on my stream, I don't have a dashboard up. So if there is any problem with the stream quality and I don't notice it on my tablet, please tell me. I'll see what I can do my end. Uh, Streamlabs kind of slimmed, toned down the actual information they present to you about band, uh, bit rate and stuff. So that's all hidden away. Anyway, so I've got my character sheet. So primary pool for a band member, obviously, is that they can play music. Um, now, how to word this so it's not just applicable to uh, I think I was treating playing music as culture I think that's what I decided when I was making these character sheets well it depends on how you approach it I guess academics would be if you approach it in a more structured theoretical uh, viewpoint So, um, I mean, you could say things like, I can play that, or I went through musical school. Well, that's not bad, because that would t tie into academics, culture, and anything really... Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. So, first, first thing, I went through music school. And the second thing, probably also performance related but it could be more along the lines of maybe kind of self-discipline self-control keeping the stage fright out of the performance uh, which is a huge part of streaming in case anyone was, was wondering i'm a nervous person to begin with and streaming is terrifying uh also role-playing is terrifying and jamming is terrifying this is like the trinity of nightmares for me but i love it anyway uh, breath control is kind of not what I'm looking for, but that's kind of the direction I think I might go in. Master of self. Mm, too martial arty, I guess. I go with consummate performance from now. Uh, consummate performer for now. That's there's a double consonant missing. There we go. Uh, for now, but uh, that might change. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put in brackets uh, just so I can remember self discipline and uh, not breath, uh, integrity, etc. So I'll put that in brackets. That might change in the final product uh, if I can think of anything better for it. But that's kind of what I was going for, kind of anything that could apply maybe to athletics from you know, keeping yourself reasonably active to keep the flexibility there to uh, integrity tests. Um, maybe leadership? Probably not, though. I like them vague enough that they can apply to two skills on the, uh, on the skills list. So that's that. Secondary pool... Cool and I like it, Namalus. I like it. And this is why <laughs> this is why I wanted. That's what, this is why I like to stream this kind of thing. I used to do this on my own channel, but I had to drop it to grow the channel. So, um, in the future, if my channel gets big enough, I'll go back to doing that. So I'll be doing this weekly anyway, but over there rather than on the Alex Path channel. Anyway, uh, sector pool. Something a band would still be doing, but less good at. Uh, probably maybe research, but kind of research in the eye of practical research and, and um, analyzing past performances, that kind of thing. Uh, what could you tie that in with? What could you tie that in with? Some technology, maybe? Hmm. 
I'm also very aware that there are skills on here that no... Well, I guess I don't need to cover all the skill bases with story guide characters. That's the point of a story guide character. It's just there in the background or in the foreground, as the case may be. But it's not it's not supposed to be stealing the scene from the characters, uh, from the, from the um, play characters. Which I hate as a term. I went over this last time. I'm not going to rehash that, uh, retread that ground. Rehash that argument, I guess. Uh, anyway, what was I trying to... Academics... Uh... Science, I guess. Music can be quite mathematical. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at a character sheet on my second monitor, if you're wondering where I'm looking. Definitely not firearms. I was kind of lingering on that to th for some reason. Um, I don't know why. This is the, the weird rabbit hole that your head can sometimes go down when you're doing content like this. Uh, just writing anything, really. Uh, sure. So let's 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 try with academics and science um, to reflect that more kind of theoretical approach to music. I'm sorry if my audio levels keep spiking. By the way, I know that my volume goes up and down, even though my pitch doesn't. Um, I also am aware I don't have the greatest speaking voice, so sorry. Bear with me with that one. Uh, Academics and science, then. So the, the more theoretical approach to music, the research, the watching past performances to learn from them, iterating, learning pieces. Um, I guess practice talent. That's not how you spell talent. There's no one near how you spell talent. Uh, yes, that'll work. And this could be like a hobby, but generic enough that a band would have it um, for the second pool, uh, for the second secondary option, I guess. What else is the team building? Ooh, team building. There's an idea. That would be survival. Also, maybe technology. Uh... Integrity, leadership also. Uh, let's say... Well, it just works well with all of it. Works well with with others. That, for some reason, really struggle to say that. Okay, and then an extra. Uh, nothing has anything in the desperation pool. The desperation pool is there for any other roles that might be required that aren't covered by these uh, four... Again, this, I say again, um, I mentioned this this time around, there are no uh, kind of hard and fast rules for creating story guide characters, as with most of Scion. A lot of it's left to um, ambiguity or, or personal kind of preference. I just like giving things to, especially because they are so vague. Um, so, for example, the for example the example antagonists uh, usually have three things in their primary pool, and two in the secondary pool. That oh, I see, but that's a kind of a a rough guide to what they have. Some of the, some some of the example antagonists break that so. I'm reasoning if I have two suitably vague things in each pool, that works. Because they, they're, they're things like just combat, feats of strength, sniping. Um, these at least are vague enough that you could apply them anywhere. Um, but when I'm coming, when I come to write antagonists that are antagonistic, I will probably limit their options to things like combat or mind control i don't know uh just so that there is like a clear focus about how this antagonist works these are just background story guide characters that are designed to evoke the feeling of other people being in the scene whilst being quite shallow and not taking the focus away from the player character well the, the spotlight character I, again i don't like the term player character the story guide is a player too um but to give that extra kind of 
added simulated depth to characters. I'm giving each um, SGC of every level uh, an extra, just to kind of flavor them. I'm keeping the professionals as the only ones that get enhancements to roles because that reflects their training. But um, they're all getting extras of some kind. I kind of just feel like for the band member, it's that they're an obvious distraction because they just can play music to distract people. Um, yep, I'm just going to go with obvious, obvious diversion. Can easily distract people with their music. Also, when I come to write this up, that these will be in probably explained in the sidebar next to the relevant um, on the on like like they did with with the actual rule book. Have the sidebar for everything on that page involve all the notes for everything on that page, um, so they'll be expanded upon. So hopefully, I can pass my own notes correctly. Anyway, crowd. Oh, did I give them a quality? I did not give them a quality. Uh, uh, drive. Sorry, did not give them the drive. Um, we'll just go with to perform for the drive. There we go. Okay, crowd members. Uh, I want this window. So. Let's say, ooh, hmm, I guess the drive would, let's, let's tackle the drive first, because I might determine other factors. Uh, crowd members, the drive, to watch, to heckle, to spend time with, I guess to watch. The vast majority of people will be there to watch the or to listen to the talks or to spend time with their friends. The minority will be there to heckle, so I'm, I'm going to just go with to watch slash listen, slash listen as the drive. I also might steal some stuff from further up here. Where did Hubai go? Mm, they don't really... Oh, wait, this one. I know something about that. Oh, there we go. So, in this instance, a lot of people who go to public lectures are interested in obviously learning about new stuff. So, a lot of them will have this is through my own personal experience. Um, I'm not saying this is true for everything, for everyone, but a lot of them have a well rounded knowledge base because they're just interested in stuff and learning about new stuff. Um, that's why I go to public lectures uh, and watch TED Talks and things. So I know something about that. And perhaps just well read. Uh, there's a bit of an over there's a bit of overlap there. Uh no, you know what? I'll go with well read. That'll cover the more kind of culture side of things rather than the academics side of things. Secondary pool. Um, That's where I always struggle. Like, what would they do that isn't their primary? This is just something that they can do or know or have uh, that they're better at by dint of like, natural talent rather than focusing on anything. Uh, one of the people? One of the crowd. There we go. Find it easy to hide in crowds. This I should specify crowd member, not crowd. There we go. Uh, so for this scene, 
they're just easy. Why is it? They just find it easier to hide. Yeah, no. It's fine. There's no grammatical error there. And, ooh, let's also say... Yeah, let's just go with a known face. So perhaps they come to events like this quite a bit. They get some social benefits from being known around. Who knows? Uh, no desperation pool and extras. Um, I have a book on that. Uh, can... Talk about any topic, oh, any topic, a topic to some degree. And there we go. That is how you make a crowd member story guide, character template, whatever you wish to call it. And we are hemorrhaging numbers, viewers. Uh, police. Oh, just a quick note on the different fonts and stuff everything is head done with headings for ease of organization uh, if you are making anything that relies on word processing or will be a document of some kind if you can i highly advise you use headings to uh why would i remove it uh to obviously get an easy organization system sorted I'm just hoping the headings transfer over into when I actually, you know, make this as an actual thing to sell. Uh, to drive. To drive. The drive for the police. We'll go with to protect for now. Oh. There we go. Uh, Primary pool. Um... Calm, under pressure. So that's integrity, leadership, people skills, uh, intense situations. And... Non-lethal training. A bit of serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. Ooh, I like serve the public trust. I like that. Uh, so non-lethal training is, is to reflect some, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat training to keep, if anything does happen, and I'm not saying that anything should happen, cough, 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 um, if anyone is playing a member of the police, they can actually contribute. Uh, I said this last stream, but only like one of the characters has any formal combat training represented on the character sheet in terms of, um, I think it was Brawl dots. Ooh, I did not like that. Uh, close combat dots. Um, so that'll be interesting. And then secondary pool. Again, not necessarily the job, but just something that they're good at. I'm going to put something about driving in here. Um, in case that comes up. Wow, so you can pass a night bot and go hard. Uh, experienced driver, and oh, what what other skills are there? Is there anything else I should include? Does not like me opening this character sheet for some reason. Well, uh, opening the window the character sheet's in, I should say. Um. Tempted to go with sensitivity training, and I know that has, for some people, negative connotations, but it's the easiest way I can think of to convey not just people skills, but a wider awareness of culture and um, like a training, a trained empathy. So I'll go with that for now. Obviously, if anything better occurs to me, or if anyone in chat says anything better, I'll go, oh. Substitute of now, sensitivity training. Uh, and then extras. Um, one of many. 
can call on backup. That seems like the easiest thing to do. If there were a member of police, member of the police at this uh, event, and this is this is something uh, that again goes back to the the focus of the scene in a way. So this scene is very much about the talks about the um, like activist slash speaker uh, with the player character there as part of not a supporting role but their associates their reason for being in the scene is, is more of an, a supporting thing um, as are the police whereas in Ash's scene the fundraiser yes the um, the organizers and the socialites and the, the disadvantaged youth are all there. The focus of that scene is more, for me at least, um, keeping that event safe from people who might want to come and steal the money or might want to do something like that, which is why the security are technically better at than the police in that scene. I might reword these. Uh, those are these are very much um, kind of the wordings used in the rule book. I just I think at the time I couldn't think of anything better um, to use. So when, when, obviously when I uh, when I go and proof this and everything, I will tweak it. Obviously, and uh, might change it to be more like this with vaguer terms for things to reflect the fact that they aren't one note characters these are just people okay so that's all that uh, I guess I have about an hour to do Michael Kettering so Michael Kettering who is Michael Kettering you may ask well gentle listener viewer subscriber follower person involved in this community Michael Kettering Concept. Everybody's friend. Uh, Michael is an incarnation of Boulder. So the difference between the different scion types um, that I rattled off at the start of the stream. Uh, a scion is someone who is born directly related to an, uh, a god. Uh, an incarnation is someone who is that god, but incarnated. So a weaker, a necessarily weaker version of that god. Perhaps the... I'm going to say Godhead, although that's not really the right term, but it gets across what I want it to get across. I could choose to incarnate an aspect of itself to learn something about the world, or just because, or through the workings of fate. Uh, so that's what an incarnation is. So Michael technically is Balder. Um, chosen, I mentioned with Martina, uh, that's someone who has grabbed that god's attention uh, for whatever reason, and they've chosen them to be uh, their a scion but not a related sound through blood or birth. And uh, created, which is where the divinity in question creates you. So Ash, for example, uh, Inari made them, literally. Uh, I've left it vague as to why or how, but they are created. Uh, Hubai and Martina are chosen scions. Uh, Isabel King, who is the one with the combat training, and Liam McMurn, who did last last time, are both scions uh, of Heru and Don, respectively. And uh, Michael, as I say, is an incarnation of Boulder. So, Michael's background. As the sole child of a large family, he was doted upon. Uh, his origin path is apple of everyone's eye. As he matured, he won... Matured? As he matured... Uh, matured. There are three different pronunciations for that word, and I'm not sure which is right. He wanted to provide others with the attention he was given and trained as a therapist. Um, so his organization path, the thing he chooses to define himself as, is a ready shoulder, a red, a ready shoulder, who spends the odd weekend in the woods tending to the local cult of Odin's ravens. Um, so his organization path is Master of Ravens. I thought it would be funny if an incarnation of Boulder was involved in an Odin cult. Sue me. Please don't. I have no money. Um, 
but that's his org- his uh, society or uh, his pantheon or organization path. That is what role he functions outside of his outside of what he defines himself as. Uh, his uh, I just need to close Martina's character sheet and open Michael's character sheet so that I do not tell you false. So his paths, um, the the ways he prioritizes himself so quick recap about paths each path gives you each path gives gives you three skills that you um uh have some training in uh then there's path asset skills no skill may be in more than two paths and each uh organization or each pantheon path each pantheon gives you two paths anyway uh, two skills anyway with a free choice of a third um, and then you prioritize which path your character prioritizes uh, primary, secondary, tertiary and you get different skill points depending on different numbers of skill points depending if it's their primary, tertiary or sec- primary, secondary or tertiary path so uh, Michael first and foremost identifies himself as a ready oh, really hard for me to say a ready shoulder I almost keep saying soldier in case you can't tell so he identifies himself as a ready shoulder. So he's the therapist. He's everyone's best friend. Um, after that, the second most important thing to him is being the apple of everybody's eye. So again, he's more of a social person than anything else. He actually has two skills at five dots, both of which are social skills. Um, well, would traditionally be termed as social skills, I should say. And then rounding up, Oh dear, I may have made a mistake on his character sheet. I need to count that through, but I'm hoping I just misclicked. Uh, rounding out his paths, um, last he re- he re- regards himself as the master of ravens. So his involvement in the local cult of Odin is almost background material to his life. It's just something he does. He just lo- looks after their ravens. Uh, I just need to quickly check something uh three two three and two three two yes okay i didn't make a mistake with the sheet i just didn't hadn't filled in one of the dots good to know i think i guess yes Yes. Okay. His sheet is fine. I mean, you can't see it anyway, and it's something I can check off stream. It was just, again, I I tried to finish one thought before I move on to another because otherwise I'll forget. Um. So that's his background. That's what how he works. So, a scene that he would be in. That I've got two kind of corporate events. Uh, I specifically didn't want it to tie into his job as a therapist because I wanted to deal with. Uh, Liam McMurn's problems um, as a doctor with blood on his hands. I've got an internet cafe and we've got the, the other corporate event. Um, I kind of think that putting the spotlight on his activities in the local cult of Odin might be an interesting starting point considering that this... I'll move my hand away from the camera because it's focusing weirdly. Um, this uh, Chronicle Seed, maybe, that's the best way of referring to it, is going to end with the revelation that, hey, you're an incarnation of Boulder. Odin is not someone that you should be. Well, Odin is not the most important Norse god in your life right now. So I think I think I might do that. Um, so setting would be... Uh, uh, I guess I'll put a meeting, but Cult of Odin. Uh, so possible story guide characters would include cult members. Uh, there are three qualities with a small Q, like personality traits, I guess. Um... 
Nope, that's why I said focused. Uh, focused, knowledgeable, and output religious, but that can cover a wide variety of things, so it's hopefully suitably vague. Um, to progress within the cult, <laughs> to show willing, and to gain favor. Uh, so what this is about, uh, for people who have not been here before, uh, when I make a story guy character is the appropriate term for this game, but when I make a, 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 you know, a game master's character, again, I don't like NPC and PC. I don't like that dichotomy. Um, on the fly, and in advance, this, for most characters, I assign them a single personality trait, so focused, knowledgeable, religious, and a drive. Um, and that's how you... That's one way of making believable uh, characters that hopefully players enjoy interacting with. Um, which... Can't, which don't seem just like you've just made them up on the fly. They seem like actual developed people. Um, so that's what this is all about. And because this, these are designed not just as background characters, but also as characters for other players at the table to pick up, uh, having a selection of character traits and drives uh, helps balance out the necessarily shallow nature of the, of the, of the character. Uh, so cult members have let's have initiates as a separate thing. Nervous, optimistic, and let's go for the third one. Let's have something not related to the initiation itself. Cynical. Let's just have an opposite to optimism. Uh, to be in, to join the cult. I to be joined. I should explain. In Zion, a cult is a an organization which worships um, a being. Let's put it that way. So not like technically, I guess, is broadly similar to what cult means in our world with a small w but in the world cults are a lot more larger and a lot a lot more larger a lot larger a lot more overt and far more common because hey the gods do exist there are scions walking around there are giants fighting on the streets uh so that's what cult in this context means um uh to join the cult to make contacts to pay off a debt just throw that in there as a secret hidden thing. I can't write today. Uh, cult members, initiates. Uh, let's. I've already used journalists, but journalists could be here as well, especially as it's the cult of the leader of the pantheon. Also means I can just reuse the stat block. Researchers. Let's go with that. Um, jaded, shy, experienced. To gain understanding. To make their name. Third drive for a researcher who would be observing a. I, I guess to. Um, this is slightly different to making your name because like, I'd love to make a breakthrough in something. Not necessarily have everyone know my name. And the last one. Who else would you find at a cult gathering? I want to stay away from security. Morning. Uh, Plastic H please, Travis, whichever you prefer. Uh... God, who else would you have at 
a cult gathering. Cultists, members of the cult, uh, initiates, researchers. Let's have some documentary makers. I think documentarian is is an is an actual word. I'm just gonna check. A person is profession is to create documentary films. Heck yeah, it is. A uh, documentarian, something. Uh, eager. Uh, precise. Oops. And final one. Let's have tired. <laughs> to document. Nope, nope, that's not how you spell that word. Uh, to document, to spread knowledge, to gain, to to win an award. Again, slightly different to making your name and making a breakthrough. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to organize all of these afterwards. So we have events. Oh nope. Uh, a cult member is revealed to be in, involved in a scandal. It really, really upsets me that I haven't, you know, typed these out in alphabetical order, but that's organizing them in that way is something for a later stage in the process. Uh, an initiate. Collapses, maybe? That's more just a kind of a one and done background thing. Maybe it kind of feels ill. Slash distressed, especially as Michael wants to be everyone's friend. Uh, is a trained therapist, counselor. Um, that could spark a small conversation. Uh, a. Researcher has many questions. That's kind of easy. That writes itself. One of the documentarians. That sounds such like an archaic word. I love it. Uh, one of the documentarians is causing problems. That's left up to the to the story guide to decide. Uh, so, this would be cult member. I uh, believe these are heading three. Looks about right. Uh, documentarian. Again, heading three for that sweet, sweet outline. Uh, and then initiate. And then research. Wow, Nightbot and Silicon Path working in tandem once again. Thank you, beauty. Uh, a meeting of the Cult of Odin being recorded for a documentary. Uh, we'll just say for television. And then we'll go for a documentary. Okay, so uh, initial thoughts. None of these are professionals. These here, being ill and distressed, being involved in a scandal, having questions. Um, these three kind of, to me, feel like something that uh, Michael should be reacting to, to should be involving himself in. So I think Michael himself is the focus of this scene. So I don't think anyone should be a professional. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to put them all down as mooks. If I think of anything to change that, I will, of course, do so. But for now, I believe they're all mooks. Also, thank you for having me on in the background while you work. Hopefully my voice is not putting you to sleep. 
and MOOC. So actually, I may as well do this. Uh, just to save on time, an accidental slash awkward. Uh, oh, nope. Nope. Thank you. Mistakes. Uh, so one. Nope. One and three. Do, 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 do. Typing with Ryan. It's so good. Why are you doing this? Oh, how did the uh, absurd number of words go? Plastic H plays. Travis, whichever you prefer again. Thank you. I try to keep... Because there's obviously a lot of typing, I try to... I try to have a light atmosphere to my streams. Uh, to this show. Um... Keep the patter going. Make terrible jokes. Uh, qualities. Obviously, I'm just going to steal from here. Is it theft if it's something I've written? Probably not. Uh, let's just go with to progress. If Microsoft can do it, Google, why can't you? Uh, so I work a lot in Word. I'm a freelance proofreader. And in Word, if you start selecting a word halfway through it, like this, uh, the moment that you leave the word, the selection expands to the last letter of the word. Or the first letter, depending on which way you're going. I just... <laughs> it's so useful. And it's such a crutch that I forget other programs, uh, other systems don't have. Um, documentarian. Kind of the baseline here is just they're doing the job because it's what they want to do. Initiates. Obviously, it could be there to join the cult. Uh, where, there we go. And researcher would be there to gain understanding. Again, this is all based on my experience, but most researchers aren't in it to, for the glory. They're in it to learn and to help can, um, improve the knowledge available, which is kind of why I'm doing this. Okay, so cult member. So they're all MOOCs, so they're all not very highly... Well, like... Mechanically aren't highly trained. Personally, probably are. Anyway, primary pool is probably going to relate to the cult. Even if you're a researcher in it for glory, then you're doing it wrong. Definitely. Um, I learned that at university. I knew people who were kind of going to uni for that kind of thing, and they weren't great people to know. Anyway, anyway. Uh, cult member, primary pool. Uh, it's probably going to relate to the cult. Let's be honest. Um... Keeper of law. So that I won't capitalize law. I won't be that person. They know about the cult, so that gives you culture and leadership options. Um secondary, probably also going to relate to the cult in some way, but more in a probably integrity. Um kind of feeling. Uh I am not alone. There we go. Boom. That one was quite easy. Secondary pool. Um, probably re related to activities that the cult does. A lot of cults will obviously need to get money somehow, so this would probably be involved in that kind of fundraising aspect. So uh, let's have this is probably going to apply to culture as well, but not specifically the cult culture. Um, kind of want to do something like. Uh, I can't even think how to phrase it. Anyway, uh, oh, team building. It's called cult of Odin. They probably cult of Odin. They probably do like survival training, um, on the weekends for corporate clients. Uh. I guess just summer camp leader, actually. Uh, summer camp trainer, not leader. Leadership's already built in. Uh, and what else would they do? So we've got kind of the fundraising side of things. Uh, what other interests would a cult of Odin have? Probably 
probably know a fair amount about birds and divination, maybe. Probably not Sather, unless they're female. I think it's not Sather. Um, or Sather. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go with Avid Ornithologist. Which, I knew that was spelled wrong. <laughs> Please remember to come for your radiology appointment. <laughs> Thanks, NHS. No reply. I, sh I will. Uh, I won't forget that at all. Um... I just like the word ornithologist. Fun fact, actually, as I was saying, in the UK, uh, I believe an ornithologist or a bird watcher is uh, is called a twitcher. Bit of, bit of cultural knowledge for you, dropping that knowledge bomb. Uh, extras. Oh, let's put a, a hyphen in there as a blank, as a just a. Sorry, I'm aware that I haven't missed anything. Uh, extras for a cult member, probably actually cult resources. Um, pockets can uh, request cult resources there we go cult member done in like 10 minutes it's the fastest one I've done so far uh, documentarian primary pool obviously can relate to technology and, and um, documentary making um, I don't want to put videographer because I'm good at what I do. There we go. So technology, a bit of academics involved. Um, but also at the other end of the scale, you've got the presenting kind of things. Uh, present, presenting skills. Presentation skills. Uh, the ability to write a script. The ability to edit. Uh, so to, to um, read your lines if needed. Obviously, in this circumstance, most of the documentarians will be just camera people or audio people. So the people skills may be not so important. Um, so let's go with something along the lines of... Ooh... Hmm. What skills do I want to focus on? We've got technology. Bit of academics. You know, rather than trying to remember what they are, I'll just pull, pull them up. Uh, ooh, occult might be interesting. Get that one in there. Here's a little known fact. Because you're going to learn stuff while making documentaries, obviously. So that's that. So that covers the science and the tech, and the academics and the occult side of things. Secondary pool. This would probably be people skills, kind of knowing how to who how to talk to people to, um, you know, get kind of what you want out of them in terms of permits and things like that. Um, How would you reflect that in a short, snappy phrase? I like my short, snappy phrases. Hmm. I guess just always knows the right person. Nope. nope. And so you got that kind of angle to a documentarian. What else would a documentarian be about? Maybe a bit of marketing buzz. Maybe the hype building. Um, well connected. Ooh, that's even better. Thank you. And can turn a phrase. 
I'll put in brackets marketing related here. Um, marketing slash hype related. Desperation pool is two, health is one, defense is one, initiative is three. Uh, and extras, this would probably pro probably be easy access to the technology required to create a documentary. Um, Tools of the trade. Can access the equipment needed for their job. There we go. Uh, initiate. So this is the, the trickier one in that an initiate would be coming from all kind of walks of life. So I need to home in on what specifically would make an initiate an initiate. So, um, sure, let's have student of student of hidden knowledge to reflect academics, occult, that kind of thing, and uh, I kind of want something like at the start of their journey, but I'm not sure what skills that might cover. Integrity, potentially, maybe subterfuge. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of like still an outsider. Because you could do that for subterfuge but also for a sense of self-identity. Let's go with that. Uh, still an outsider. Uh, but I will make a note that it is relating to subterfuge and integrity. Uh, secondary pool, this would be obviously maybe contacts. Uh, I say obviously this would be contacts, pre-existing relationships with members of the cult perhaps. I have a sponsor. So, possibly leadership. Again, possibly integrity, but relating to cult matters. Uh, that kind of thing. And... Uh, I can make the time. Uh, the focus here being academics. Uh, like to learn. Ah, that's too vague. That's really vague. Uh, I'm willing to learn. There we go. So that'll be more academics and any kind of other skill, really. Uh, extras. Um, Former ties, has contacts, not related to cult. Not related to the cult. That took like three minutes. I'm so proud of myself. Uh, researcher, uh, again, understanding primary pool. Obviously, it's going to be <laughs> academics related. Um, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. I do sometimes make odd noises. I do apologize for that. Uh, I know that it can be distracting, especially for people who have these on in the background while they work. And I just want to stay, state, uh, any level of engagement with the stream is fine. Even if you're, it's just on in the background while you're working, it's all appreciated that you're at least here and supporting the show, uh, that you are here, sorry, and supporting the show. Um, Brian Paul for a researcher. <laughs> Highly organized. That's great. Good, good. Uh, it's just trying to avoid dead air by any cost. At any cost, by any means. Whichever phrase you prefer. Uh, so well organized, that would be integrity. Uh, academics, if you're trying to research something, obviously. Uh, oh, well organized mind. Highly organized mind, even. There we go. 
And let's see, dead air would be much more distracting. Yes, it is. That's why I try to keep the patter up. Uh, obviously, sometimes I stop so I can actually think, but I try to limit that to no more than five seconds or so. Um, that's also why I just say random things. Uh, so highly organized mind, so that covers academics, culture, possibly even a cult. Um, people skills, persuasion. Uh, expressive um, mind, blank, oh, uh, well-spoken, that's still wrong, loquacious, definitely wrong, that's what I am, I really shouldn't be, uh, oh, I really shouldn't claim to be, anyway, when I have mind blanks like this, um, Oh, gosh. Um, it's there. I can feel it in my brain. Oh, jeez. Oh, my. I'm trying to, trying to think of how I've described per, like public speakers I've, I've, I've watched or listened to. Easily understood, maybe? It gets across the essence of what I want without it being completely what I want. It's also completely false. A lot of research is quite dense. Take it from me, especially if you're not used to the subject matter. Um, but it kind of get as I say, it's the essence of what I want, uh, of kind of that ability to put words down in a method. Eloquent, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Oh, geez, there we go. Um, I might, again... At, build on that when I come to writing it out, but that is the essence of what I wanted. Thank you. Plastic edge, please. Anyway, secretary pool. Uh, this funny